Hi, Jim. Hey, Jim. Hey, Jim. Cheese sticks in the shape of a heart. The famous Hooters restaurant chain may be better known for its waitresses than its wings, but the job is more demanding than it looks. Here are 15 secrets Hooters girls want you to know. The Hooters Employee Handbook. Verbal agreements are binding. Shut the handbook. The notorious Hooters Employee Handbook is an eight-page layout of the law, and it overlooks every aspect of the Hooters girl's persona. It notes that customers can go anywhere for wings and beer, but the Hooters girl experience is what makes their restaurant truly unique. While most customers would immediately recognize the iconic outfit of white tank tops and orange booty shorts, there is a surprisingly large amount of demanding parts to the job. Which is very physically demanding. The Hooters Employee Handbook governs the girls inside and out, demanding constant attention to teeth, nails, hair, body, and uniform, and even customer interactions and on-shift dietary suggestions. The handbook can be quoted as wanting their server's now famous look to be wholesome yet sexy and athletic by design. They've certainly made that happen over the years, but it requires some pretty serious commitment by the employees. Are you not entertained? Why do I like Hooters? I will give you two reasons. Instead of waitresses or servers, female employees of Hooters are officially referred to as Hooters girls. Even though they do everything a restaurant server does, they are technically classified by the company as entertainers. In legal terms, it's called bona fide occupational qualification, and it allows employers to ignore some basic hiring practices if they can argue it's fundamental to the success of their business. It's a small change that Hooters uses to enforce their strict rules about presentation. You are literally the most wide-eyed person I've ever seen. You have the face of a cartoon lamb. Crazy as it sounds, Hooters can hire or fire employees based on age, physical appearance, and gender. The employee handbook explicitly states that when you are in the Hooters girl uniform, you are literally playing a role. It even goes as far as to include a Hooters girl's acknowledgement of this situation that has to be signed, dated, and witnessed when the employee is hired. The acknowledgement reads that the Hooters concept is based on female sex appeal and the work environment is one in which joking and innuendo based on sex appeal is commonplace. It also requires them to agree that none of their work requirements are offensive, intimidating, or unwelcome. Even if the role pushes some boundaries, it at least makes it clear what the girls are expected to deal with when they go to work. And the sneakers are strictly business. High heels, you shouldn't have. Unlike the higher end of the food service business, Hooters girls are not required to wear high heels. But right down to the socks, the footwear regulations are as demanding as any pair of stilettos. The uniform socks must be white slouch style socks, and they are to be slouched in a particular way to apparently make the employee's legs look leaner. Wow, this short skirt is making my legs look long and sexy. The matching shoes have to be tennis shoes that are 100% white in color, right down to the shoelaces. The employee handbook also specifies that they must be either leather or faux leather, three quarters or high tops in style, with no mesh or canvas allowed. Much like the strict pantyhose regulations, if they become scuffed or damaged in any way, they need to be immediately replaced. They have specific Hooters hosiery. If it was literal, I share your aversion to soiled hosiery. If a uniform is built from the ground up, then whatever comes after the shoes must be just as important. The pantyhose. And of course, they too are subject to strict rules. Hooters girls must wear pantyhose of their own purchase and must wear them any time they are in uniform. As dictated in the employee handbook, they can wear no shade other than suntan. Hooters girls with a darker complexion may go only one single shade darker than suntan. And if at any time, even in the middle of a shift, the pantyhose develop a run or a snag, they must be immediately replaced before they can continue work. Replace it? Mm -hmm. The employee handbook also notes that Hooters won't bend the rules to allow for tights or leggings instead of pantyhose. So those nice Lululemons will have to wait for yoga class. Burgers, not bling. Take that stuff off. 
The dining experience at Hooters is fun, but is intentionally designed not to be flashy. Wearing any jewelry at work is strictly regulated for Hooters girls. Any jewelry is to be minimal in appearance and amount, and the handbook has it down to specific numbers and types. The staff are limited to two earrings per ear at most, two rings per hand at most, and two bracelets at most. They can only wear a maximum of one necklace, but it has to be a very specific necklace. It can't be too wide, too long, or too heavy. And what qualifies as such is all determined by managerial staff on site. The necklace rule also specifically excludes wearing chokers or beads. I can't wear this. Tongue piercings must be removed, and except for one small nostril piercing that's permitted, any other body part piercings must be removed or hidden under the uniform. At this rate, they might as well have the girls pass through a metal detector. Finger food. I'm gonna go get my nails done. Do you wanna come? God, yes. Breaking a nail at work can be an inconvenience at most jobs, but in this gig, it's one of a Hooters girl's biggest worries. Here is one of the odd specifics that Hooters girls have to comply with that sounds more like a manicurist standard than a restaurant one, the fingernails. The manual goes out of its way to note that nail polish colors are not to be too extreme, no nail art is allowed, and neither is nail jewelry. Enough about the jewelry. In some of their restaurants, the girls are only allowed two fingernail styles, nude, natural-looking gloss, or French, a white line across the tip. Excessively long nails are deemed distracting and not allowed either. The handbook dictates the haircut. Why did I change my hairstyle? Hairstyles must also be approved to a strict standard, and this is apparently so important it's upheld by managers and human resources personnel. Hooters servers do need to have their hair styled for their shift, but it can't be in pigtails or a ponytail. You can forget about hair clips or a classic 90s scrunchie, too. Hats or headbands are also strictly forbidden by the handbook. If a server wears their hair colored or dyed, it has to be in a natural tone. Wig fall under the same scrutiny as staying with a natural look, so leave the fast food clown cuts to Ronald McDonald. God, this is worse than having Ronald McDonald for a father. Hooters also forbids any hairstyles that might be too modern, as their handbook specifically quotes that no bizarre haircuts, styles, or colors are acceptable. Not just another pretty face. It doesn't have to be perfect. At Hooters, the girls must wear makeup during work hours, and as might be expected, it can't just be styled anyway. According to the employee handbook, makeup is to be worn to best accentuate facial features and must strike a balance between not too extreme, not too minimal. Ideally, it's a barely there natural look. According to the handbook, this rule is to play up an all-American cheerleader, surfer, girl next door personality for the Hooters girls. There are also no less than three separate instances of the handbook reminding the girls to, with all capital letters and three exclamation points, SMILE. A statement in the handbook matter-of-factly notes, This is show business, just like the modeling industry. Derek Zoolander, eat your heart out. Keep it covered up. You put some normal clothes on. Why are you so mean to me? Get them on now! With the exception of the shoes and socks, the iconic Hooters uniform can't be visible outside of the work environment. The employee handbook is explicit in stating that the uniform must be completely covered when employees are entering or leaving the store. The only leniency is made for promotional events that take place away from store limits. According to the handbook, the exception is unless working at a Hooters-sponsored event, like a community or charity promotion outside of the restaurant. Otherwise, it reads that under no circumstances should the Hooters girls' uniform be worn outside of the store. Breaking this rule is grounds for immediate dismissal. You're fired. Go. Please, I need this job. You're fired. Now, while this can be a pretty common practice at most uniformed workplaces, it holds more weight for Hooters girls, as they can often be targets of harassment, stalking, or intimidation due to the over-the-top sex appeal nature in their line of work. So it's not just for protecting the restaurant's intellectual property, it's also for the safety of their entertainers. Don't even think about showing ink. A tattoo, I'm getting a tattoo. 
Once upon a time, it was very much frowned upon for workers in a public-facing industry to have visible tattoos on the job. It would be almost impossible for someone with tattoos to get a desk job, work in door-to-door -door sales, or work in food service. But stances have softened in recent years, and having some skin art at your place of business isn't just for the rock and roll crowd. That is, unless you're a Hooters girl. The employee handbook strictly forbids ink of any degree, stating, Tattoos are not allowed to show. Any tattoos must be covered by the uniform. The only loophole to this rule is for Hooters kitchen employees, but if it is deemed profane or inappropriate by management, the tattoo must be covered up. Managers must approve the midriff. Right, let's mm -hmm. approve yeah. it. Yeah. Approved. approved. As it turns out, certain parts of the uniform rules are flexible, to an extent. Small things like allowing the servers to wear a black version of the Hooters tank top on Fridays. There are also monthly themed costume nights, but the employees have to fork out their own cash for the costumes. So you can ditch the orange short shorts and 80s scrunch socks, but only if you can afford a costume from the Halloween store. We can't afford it. A variation is allowed for long sleeves instead of the tank tops if the Hooters restaurant is located in a cooler climate. And if you can get approval from the higher-ups, the girls can wear a Hooters-branded crop top. That's if the Hooters girl can be defined as having a flat enough stomach with toned abdominals and no muffin top. Dieting by design. Hey, is that healthy food? Outside of the strict appearance requirements of the handbook, there are a few rules regarding conduct and performance that Hooters girls have to comply with. Don't worry, most of them are just as weird as the rest. It's common practice for restaurant staff to be offered a free meal on their breaks at work. But due to Hooters' demanding regimen for attractive employee appearance, they've structured this practice differently. Not listed on the menu next time you head out for Hooters wings is their selection of healthy options, which are available only to employees. We are going to eat healthier. Things like salads and skinless chicken breast and other low-calorie options. Some Hooters girls affectionately call this the spa menu, and it's designed to keep their athletic appearance in mind. The catch? It's free, but if they want to indulge in the classic chicken wings or cheeseburgers, they have to pay out of pocket. Hooting and hollering. Hi there, customer. Someone hungry? A friendly greeting for customers is expected at any dining establishment, but Hooters girls have to stick to the script. It is mandatory for employees who aren't otherwise occupied to belt, Hi guys, welcome to Hooters! whenever customers enter the doors of the restaurant. The unified holler of a greeting is supposed to create a welcoming atmosphere for patrons. And after the shout, they can chat and converse as they normally would. So it's not that they can't think of any better greetings, it's just that they aren't allowed to use them. Ladies first. Oh, ladies first. While Hooters' typical clientele base is men who come to enjoy the atmosphere, that's not to say women don't frequent the establishment. But it is a rare enough occurrence that Hooters girls have a special set of conduct rules to make the women feel just as welcome as the men. In the situation of a male-female couple at a table, they are trained to avoid as much direct contact with the man as possible. Hey, I noticed that you made eye contact with boobles. Conversely, they're directed to treat the women as warmly and friendly as they can, going as far as to physically sit beside the female customer when serving them. Fun and games. You guys want to have some fun? Yeah. <laughs> On certain shifts, Hooters girls can participate in choreographed team dance routines as upbeat music plays, which really leans into the entertainment part of the job. Restaurants also keep a selection of board games on hand for customers to freely use, and employees are invited to play along with customers if it doesn't interrupt their work. Bender, come join us! Getting paid to play Hungry Hungry Hippos? Maybe there are perks to being a Hooters girl after all. Stick around, we've got more just for you, so here are some more awesome videos to check out.